When I was a young man, I always saw cool advertisements for Dungeons and Dragons. And I wanted to be cool as well. So I tried to play Dungeons and Dragons. It did not work out. My neutral paladin PC player character was in a well-groomed garden when disaster struck. I tried to parlay. No response. I tried to shoot it with an arrow. No effect. And that was a plus three arrow. The DM assured me that only the keenest of acts could possibly harm this monstrosity. So I ran. But my PC player character could not run fast enough. My character was eaten by that monster. By the dread gazebo. Hey everybody, if you understood both of the references in that introduction, then congratulations, you spend way too much time online. Yes, this is my classic dread gazebo build. This is made mostly from thrift store finds, including a bit of a castle piece, as well as some arms and legs from some sort of weird dragon dinosaur toys. I think they're like kind of like a knockoff of the Mega Bloks toys. They certainly don't look as good as the Mega Bloks. They're, the arms and legs fit on there all wonky. Anyways, I had a whole bag of mismatched parts for this, so I think this was the perfect use for them. And the perfect configuration as well. I've been watching a lot of Warhammer, like, scratch builds for, like, uh, orc stuff. And it's just, I really think putting them on the sides uh, rather than the bottom. Because I was considering, like, a Baba Yaga-style thing where, like, the legs are coming from the bottom. But putting them on the sides so, like, the gazebo kind of drags itself around the ground, it just made it look really goofy and just perfect for this build, and definitely inspiration from all the different uh, people that are making orc stuff uh, for Warhammer. Just the goofiness aspect of it is just, oh, perfect, perfect. So obviously the mouth and uh, teeth and eyes are green stuff, uh, basic sculpting. The paints are mostly uh, contrast paints and washes. And specifically when affixing the little bits to other little bits, uh, I did the technique where I use a little bit of hot glue and then either tacky glue or full strength PVA glue to permanently kind of fix those on there. I like doing this because then it gives you a little bit more freedom if you want to go and break them off and like rearrange them afterwards. The hot glue is not much of a bond and you can easily do that. So you can get the proper and perfect configuration of random parts to your little scratch slash kit bash. I'm not sure what this is. Let me know in the comments if this is a kit bash or a scratch build, or if there's just some other word for crafting a D&D miniature out of random bits of toys that I'm not aware of. It's not really a scratch build because like I had obviously the pre-molded parts for the majority of it, but it's not like a kit bash always makes you think that you're using parts left over from a sprue. So I don't know. All I know is that I'm very impressed with the the basic sculpting that I did. I think it's perfect. I think the little parts and the color choices that I ended up with were just a happy accident. And I'm very satisfied with this lovely build. And I hoped you enjoyed taking a look at it in this video.